Queen of Queens was released on the PCFX, featuring the talent of All Japan Women's Pro Wrestling. Many of you may be asking, what on earth is the PCFX? Well, the PCFX was NEC Home Electronics follow-up to the PC Engine, which went by the TurboGrafx-16 in North America. The TurboGrafx-16 failed to find success in America, but was phenomenally successful in Japan. The 1994 PCFX was released only in Japan, but due to its combination of high price, outdated graphics chip, lack of third-party support, and being released within a month of both the PlayStation and the Sega Saturn, the PCFX failed to make any indent into the overcrowded market at the time. The game is FX! So that leaves us today with a rare case of a Japan-exclusive pro wrestling game released on a Japan-exclusive console. The game is a full motion video fighting game. FMV was pretty big at the time due to the novelty of video on these newfangled disk drives, and it was only a matter of time before wrestling took a stab at it. The FMV is a gimmick, but compared to previous Joshi games, I must admit that the FMV does make the characters look like the actual wrestlers themselves. It's not hard to see why, in an era when leaps and graphics were hugely noticeable unlike today, full motion video took off. The development team clearly put a lot of work into the FMV. Not only do we have intro and outro videos for the scenario modes, every wrestler filmed each move against everyone on the game's roster. That means that Kira Hokuto had to film her body slam at least 19 different times. They didn't cut any corners when it came to the video. Not all of the moves are convincing, and sometimes it's painfully obvious when they are trying not to hit the camera. Other times wrestlers look bored or even asleep Occasionally, they'll just look right into the camera as well. There's a low-budget charm to it. It is odd having both wrestlers facing the screen, but after a match or two, it kind of works. The game also features cutaways for big moves or solo actions. Of course, the FMV limits the gameplay. You're not free to roam as you please, but Queen of Queens finds some interesting ways to approach that problem. The game seems horribly unplayable at first, but the more I played it, the more I realised there was actually some strategy to the game. Mash the buttons like there's no tomorrow, and your wrestler will quickly be out of stamina. In fact, you don't even start the match with full stamina. The key to victory is to build up your stamina so at the right time you can hit your opponent with a few big moves and grab a pin or a submission. Stamina wears down quickly, and health regenerates at a generous pace, so sometimes you can feel like you're in a bit of a holding pattern. But honestly, it does add a bit of simulation-style realism to the game. Timing is important in Queen of Queens. This is not Fire Pro, but timing still matters. You often find yourself as the mirror image of your opponent, she and yourself both in a position to strike, but replenishing stamina instead. It adds a fun element of calling your opponent's bluff. You have several moves in your arsenal, and you can hit moves off the ropes by double tapping left if you play a 1. It's also possible with the right button combination to hit a move from the top turnbuckle. The roster is made up of AJW wrestlers Aja Kong, Akira Hokuto, Yumiko Hota, Manami Toyota, Toshio Yamada, Kyoko Inoue, Takiko Inoue, Etsuko Mita, Mima Shimoda, and Sakie Hasegawa. Lioness Asuka also makes a guest appearance in the tutorial, but sadly she's not playable. It's a pretty complete snapshot of AJW around 94 to 95. Over on the second disc, to my surprise, there's an additional 10 wrestlers to be found, but sadly, to the best of my knowledge, none of them are real. I'm not sure why they didn't include other AJW wrestlers like Lioness Asuka, or even JWP wrestlers instead. I know they were in competition with each other, but JWP had been featured prominently on AJW's Big Egg Wrestling Universe show just five months before this game's release. Anyway, we can pick from a somewhat disappointingly stereotypical roster of the fictional company KWP. They are the final boss and maybe ballerina? Harden? An Egyptian-themed wrestler named Patra, a cross between Hayabusa and the great Muta, Yumika, an upper-class warrior called Mamoiselle Seiko, whatever the blue hell Judy Arakai is supposed to be, a female Tarzan, Jane Honda, a Sailor Moon ripoff, Sailor Tsugami, who gives us the most gratuitous panty shots of the game, somewhere between a princess and a Power Ranger, Yokihi, the generic goth Onono Machiko, 
and the Bozozoku gang member, Shion. There are two discs to Queen of Queens. The first features a round-robin tournament called League Mode, and a regular versus mode. Over on the second disc, there's the same, plus a scenario mode. In this mode, you must defeat all of the previously mentioned and dating wrestlers from the fictional KWP promotion, before defeating Harden, the de facto champion of KWP. The mode is bookended by a challenge from Harden, and then her admitting that you're the queen of the ring, which is a nice feature allowed by the FMV. The disc format also allows for real music, which is nice, the intro song being especially catchy. The in-game music isn't bad either, and it sounds good on the CD format. Grunts and groans can be heard too, which is a nice touch. Ring announcements can also be heard, although they get grating in little to no time due to the announcer's weird cadence. Yamada. Overall, for the amount of effort that you'd have to go into to track down a copy of this game, plus the console itself, the game isn't worth it. It's a curiosity and a relic of the brief blip of time that FMV ruled the video game industry. I did have quite a lot of fun playing it once I'd worked out the stamina strategy. If for whatever reason you have access to a copy, it would be fun to play with a friend over a beer or two. We give All Japan Women's Wrestling, Queen of Queens, two Sasuke's out of five. Just before we go, I just wanted to make mention that this episode is dedicated to the career of Manami Toyota, who announced her upcoming retirement in November of this year. I'll put a link here and in the description to a fantastic New Generation Project podcast about the career of Manami Toyota. You really owe it to yourself to check it out before she retires. So until episode 5, please give us a like, comment below, and maybe even a cheeky click of that subscribe button. Sayonara!